Hi, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm so excited to be chatting with you guys. I think Hentified is such an incredible show. And I mean, it it shows through, you know, all of the reception it's received and 92% on Rotten Tomatoes constantly being praised for its topical storyline and incredible diversity. So it's such an honor to be speaking with you guys today. Um, Marvin, my first question is for you. Can you talk to me a little bit about coming up with the storylines for season two? Like, did you always have these ideas in your head or did it kind of come after the positive reception of season one? No, oh, yeah, we, we <laughs> I was gonna try and come up with a joke, Never mind. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, what, you know, we left off on all these cliffhangers last season. So we definitely had, you know, these storylines that we knew we wanted to explore. I mean, like we kind of had mapped out a couple seasons when we were just still pitching this season, the show. Um, and, but, you know, of course, after having gone through making the entire first season, there was an opportunity. We were just like, well, how do we do this? How do we do something different? How do we not just repeat ourselves? How do we continue these stories, but create something that still feels fresh and that is going to circumvent expectations, you know? And so I think, uh, um, you know, Lynn and I just like, like, uh, like, like, pretentious artists went away to Big Bear for a couple of weeks and just like try to figure it out. We were just like, what is it? What do we want to feel? How, what's something we haven't seen yet? And what didn't we get to do last season that we'd like to try to accomplish this season? And I think that's kind of where we started from and, and we're, we're able to uh, uh, come out with a, a season that I think feels compared to last season, a little more raw, a little more uh, moody uh, um, while still retaining a lot of the comedy, but more grounded and I mean, my favorite way to put it is that we wanted Hentified to feel like it got like, you know, went through some shit and grew up a little bit. Um, and I think that that's what we, we hopefully accomplished with the tone this season. Yeah, that's incredible. And America, as executive producer, what was your, okay, so two questions. What was your first reaction when you found out that Hentified got renewed for season two? And what do you hope for the future of the series? Well, my first reaction was just total excitement that Marvin and Linda got to step up into the positions of running the show by themselves, which they did this year and they did an amazing job of. And just that we got to continue with this awesome family that that they built and people loved and that we just got to dive deeper into each of these characters because we are far from done telling the stories of these characters and, and this neighborhood and all the themes it's exploring. Um, and you know, my my I feel like this season realized so many of the dream, you know, so many of the hopes I had for for this season two, which was that ultimately that Marvin and Linda got to explore their creativity more, that they got to take bigger risks and and you know, now that they had proven the concept of the show with season one, um, to, to get to take bold risks and, you know, not not always succeed, although I feel like you guys pretty much succeeded in, in all of it, but, you know, take risks that might end in failure, but like afford them the opportunity to do big things. And some of the things I love about this season are like one episode, which Linda directed, she directed her first episode this season. She did an amazing job. That episode is completely outside of, of Boyle Heights and completely outside of the world that you know. It takes two characters out and it just feels like its own little mini independent film. And it's amazing. And, you know, premium cable shows get to do that all the time. So why shouldn't our our beautiful little brown love story get to do that? Um, you know, Marvin put our family like on the beach celebrating Christmas on the beach in the last episode. And, you know, not to like give too many things away, but like we got to expand outside of the world that was beautifully created, but then getting to move outside of that and see our characters in new contexts is is what's fun, you know, to get to evolve and see what's next for them. Yeah, that's incredible. And then Linda, as our fabulous co-creator, really quick, just to wrap us up, what do you think is the boldest decision that you guys made for season two of Hentified? That's a big question. I don't know. Marvin put a horse in episode seven. <laughs> Maybe the horse that he like begged us to put into the season. I mean, I think the statements that we're making, that Pop is making, there's a, you know, there's two moments, end of 201, where he says his name and he's undocumented. That was a big 
voice, a big, bold move for this character to say something that is so scary to say out loud for someone in our community. And I think in 207, when we have Pop do his interview, he says, um, I belong here whether you like it or not. Like he says it straight into camera. Both those moments are straight into camera and it's on purpose. You know, it's for us to show the world like something that we feel for ourselves and our communities and our parents and our grandparents and the family that we love and hold so dear. It's a big, a big, uh, for lack of using a curse word, a big like, we're here, we're here and we belong here, whether you like it or not. And I think that was a scary thing to put in there, but it's a real thing. And I think it's an empowering thing that we need folks in our community to, to see and to hold and to embody. Yeah, that's incredible. Literal chills. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to chat with me. I cannot wait to see everyone's reactions when Hentified Season 2 drops November 10th. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, thank you guys. <laughs>